Hello and welcome back to New You Wow Going Places where we empower everyone in our community and we're looking for ways to achieve epic breakthroughs with strength in numbers. Today, we are honored to have as guest Eric Jenkins, self-taught aspiring abstract artist and former music video fashion model who's been described as unique, cool, independent, and has done fabulous art designs and drawings on t-shirts and so much more. Thank you so much for joining us today, Eric. How are you? Hi, honey. How are you? <laughs> Doing fantastic. It's great to have you with us. How are things in sunny California? Sunny California is doing well, you know, <laughs> nice little, cool, little breeze, you know, Fabulous. and the sun is shining, shining because, you know, we don't get no rain out here. Okay. Okay. <laughs> well, you know, we always get things rolling a little bit with a bit of an icebreaker. So today we are wondering if you could share something interesting about yourself that most people do not know. A little nugget. Absolutely. Um, I would say that some people don't know that I'm reserved, that um, I'm slowly to reveal mm -hmm. my emotions and my opinions about things and people. Mm -hmm. And also, um, I'm introverted. And there's many, many forms of introverted folks. For me, I'm not antisocial. Right. <laughs> Which is good. You know, I'm not shy. You know, um, I'm just not really into small talk and I can talk about real life all day. That's fantastic. You know, I can actually relate to that because I'm taking it back many, many moons, but I did one of those personality tests and I was floored when the results came back that I was an introvert. And I'm thinking, but I, I love people. <laughs> what do you mean? But there's not a wrong or a right. It's a matter of sometimes you're okay just being by yourself and like you said there's different types so you're still perfectly fine around people but you're okay in yourself just being alone and so i think that's great because we kind of have the best of both worlds you know absolutely you know it's just a lot of people just are not aware that things come in many forms everything comes in many forms and i, couldn't I think agree that'll more. help us gradually get out of the vision and become more universal. And That's quite important. You know, yeah. with one another. You make a good point. How long have you been out in California now? Oh my gosh, OMG. You know, <laughs> um, <laughs> I've been in California for, oh my gosh, like over 15 or 16 years. It's been a long time. Time flies. Wow. Yeah. Wow, that is amazing. And specifically, which part are you in? I'm in Pasadena, girl. Okay, yeah, I remember the many visits well over 20 years ago. Glorious town, used on a lot of movie sets, a lot of landmarks. Oh, so, yes. Yeah, a lot of great architecture. So you got a lot of good history, that's wonderful. And yeah. you know, earlier you were telling me a little bit about your skating, how you do this to keep in shape, I was blown away when you said it's been more than 30 years. That's right. That's right. Wow. And the length of the skate, you say sometimes it can be an hour and a half. How long do you go? Absolutely. Around an hour and a half for sure. Wonderful. What do you find most uplifting about those skates? What is it to you that keeps you going after 30 years? Well, actually, it's a passion, you know, it has a passion power force that surfaces inside of me. And I just use it to just love and light. I just want to give love and light. And people in the neighborhood recognize me. People recognize me even if I'm not wearing my skates, like at the grocery <laughs> stores and stuff. So, That's you cool. know, so it's I, I feel, you know, so many people are like, oh, you're famous. You're famous. I was like famous for what? Just they doing were like, what you oh, do. Yeah. Bleeding. I was like, oh, thank you. You know, so I get a lot of love. Wow. And, and you know, I, I like how you make the point. Sometimes we just show up in life doing what we do, but you never know who's paying attention. You never know who's setting their clock by some activity in your world. Even if it's just a smile, 
because everyone needs something to keep them going. So I think that's phenomenal. Now, for the sake of our listening audience, we're going to ask a question taking you back. What is one of your fondest childhood memories? My fondest childhood memory, I would say my birthday party at Burger King in 1985. Oh, yeah? And you remember the year? Okay. Yes, I got the picture. <laughs> okay. And what made it so profound? Why did it stand out? Hold on. Uh-oh, going for the picture. Hey. Put it a little closer. Oh, wow. So who's in the photo? That's a, that's a friend um, of our family, and that's me in the middle. Okay. And that's my childhood best friend, Jonathan. Oh, wow. So you still speak with the other friends? I don't, you know, see, we didn't know that Facebook and all that was going to be in the future. Right. Yeah. Today's didn't generation. Any last know. names. Look at that. You know, so I love Jonathan, you know, he, you know, I could hug him, hold his hand. He would go down the, the slide with yeah. me and everything. <laughs> well, you know, you never know with social media being what it is. If somehow they reconnect and reach out to you. Oh my of gosh, that. Jonathan, that would like, oh my gosh, my heart would fly open. I think it'll fly open. <laughs> Yeah, things <laughs> things definitely have a way of going full circle. That's for sure. Oh, and wow. and given that you know all these memories that come flat, they really come flying at us and, and flooding back into our hearts. They they're like little puzzle pieces that complete who we are. So given your love for art, you know, and the, and the, and the fact that with that art you're wanting to contribute love and light locally and globally. How would you say that your experiences growing up play into your artwork how is it connected that's interesting i always felt like i was special and you know but i you know i wasn't so well in school i didn't do well in school so i was like i feel special so what is it you know mm -hmm. um my artistic ability it came full circle for me later in life as a teenager okay so as a kid, I I wasn't attracted to art or, you know, I was aware that, oh, that's a piece of art right there. Right. But I didn't have no connection at all. So the whole art thing was something that blew me away. That's something that just came and, you know, it all came together. And I was like, I was like, whoa, this is, I think this is why I'm special. And, and given art. that, the art? You know, I, yeah. I'm curious too, you said it was in your late teens. So was there a deciding moment where you thought, I need to pursue a career in fashion and art? Oh my gosh, you know, you know, fashion became the, you know, forefront because I was desperate. I was desperate to find something because, mm -hmm. you know, people put pressure on you. Mm -hmm. What are you, what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you going to do with your life? And what, you know, so I was just like searching and searching and seeking and trying to find something that I can be great at that I could possibly have a career. Mm -hmm. And so I did the whole modeling thing and girl, the rejection from that. I mean, I was, I was getting rejected year after year because you have to, as a model, you have to have photos mm -hmm. for a year. And then if you haven't gotten signed or anything like that, you have to, the next year, you have to do pictures all over again. You got to change up your look. Mm. You know, it was very, very frustrating. And with art, I didn't, I didn't take it. It was like something that I was very protective of. Okay. You know, I, I wasn't, you know, I wasn't interested. I had no desire to go to art school or anything like that. You know, um, I won like two art contests in uh, high school and middle school, but Amazing. I still didn't have any passion to go to art school, you know? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I just, I just, it was just something I was fully protective over. And then around 20, I would say 2016, um, I had like this amazing supernatural moment where I was on the phone with my best friend and I was painting while I was talking to her. Mm -hmm. And then the paint just accidentally fell on the canvas and 
all I had to do was just even just like tap my paintbrush on the canvas and it was forming its own thing. That's intense. And so I was like, um, now I have to, I have to take it on professionally. Wow. I felt like it was something I needed, I had to do. And you know, I'm, I'm gonna circle back to the point that you made when you said in school, you weren't doing so well from a grade perspective, but you always felt special. I, I think it's so important that we, we let that resonate with any young ones that might be listening. Um, unfortunately, a lot of the institutions say, you know, the A is what makes you great. And there's this pressure to become something you may not be comfortable with or that doesn't appeal to you, but you know you're special. Every individual is unique and amazing. And the most important thing that we have to do for ourselves is hold on to that knowledge and that belief that we are amazing. Don't let, you know, anyone take that away from you or devalue you because you're still on your path of discovering what you like to do. Absolutely. I mean, you know, because I remember I can feel it. I, I, you know, because a lot of people would say that, oh, I have, okay, I can have pictures and stuff and, and videos and stuff of my childhood, but they don't really remember how they felt. I remember how I felt, you know, when a kid is just totally, totally in their full freedom, their full state, you know, of being. Mm -hmm. I remember that. That's you know, great. um, so once so when I got traumatized, that's when ego, my ego mind came into the forefront. And that's when I I I, I remember before I walked out the door, I said that I'm going to be good and I'm going to be quiet. I'm gonna use characteristics from my my nature and use that to protect myself. So being good and being quiet was my protection. Interesting. Yeah. And, you know, I, I think it's powerful, too, that you you can realize and speak to that now. Because a lot of times when we're facing, whether it's trauma, any situation that's testing, you know, it, it's a struggle inside. And so some people immediately go into denial or like the little turtle hide in a shell. And there's a question of when are you going to come out? You know, you, you have to be okay, uh, especially to get past those roadblocks because otherwise life can just pass you by and you're kind of stuck in that moment. Um, so I think it's great that you found art as an outlet to get past that and to just really be free. Um, you know, I'm curious about what are your sources of inspiration? Oh my gosh, my sources of inspiration is my influences like Whitney Houston, mm -hmm. Marilyn Monroe, mm -hmm. just people that I see myself in, just to see myself in them, that's me, that's yes. me, that's me who I'm witnessing through another. And that just like fills me up. I mean, literally fills me up. Like I, you know, that's part of my drive, just like all these influences. And it's, and it's unlimited. The influences don't stop. It just don't stop. I like that point that you make too. It's, it's really connectivity. When you hear about an amazing experience or you see someone who's on this path to greatness and you realize that it's really not that different from you, that whatever you want to accomplish is not outside your reach, but it all starts in your mind. And then you mentioned earlier those emotions you know, it's, it's, it's very easy to get caught up in emotions, especially when they're negative. But the thing about emotions is their energy. And so if you can tap into a way to roll the negative ones into positive, well, now you're unstoppable. You know, you have the motivation, the fuel, whatever it takes to keep going and to be there for others in your life. So I think that's beautiful. Now, you were born in Lake Okeechobee, like myself, right? Yes, Okeechobee, small town, Okeechobee. <laughs> and, you know, you were sharing some information about a great uncle 
that was inducted into a particular Art Hall of Fame. Can you tell us a little bit more about Robert Butler Sr.? Yes, he's my my mom's brother. Okay. And he was part of the Highwaymen group. Nice. It was an artistic group of, you know, artists that came together and used their art as a movement. Nice. And they're all inducted in the um, Florida Artist uh, Museum Hall of that Fame. That is fantastic. Yeah. And, you know, what's so beautiful about that, because you said his uh, specialty was wildlife, like wood areas. Yes, he was a wildlife landscape artist, and he did a lot of his paintings in Okeechobee. Very nice. Yeah, yeah the Florida Everglades. Beautiful, beautiful point of focus. Wow. Um, yeah. My father was also an artist. And I know, I know. <laughs> yes, yes, so, you yes. know, it, it runs in the family. And, you know, yes, I, yes. I remember when I was little, um, he did a lot of drawings for the bedroom. So I had them hanging up. And I went through this phase, uh, I would say, I wasn't even a teen yet, so preteen, where I was angry about something. Ask me now what it was, I have no idea. But I called myself being grown, taking those paintings and just getting rid of them. Wow. I regret it, I regret it to this day because sometimes you don't know the memories that you're gonna be able to, to keep and the connection that someone has, especially when it comes to art, because it's like they're giving a piece of themselves to the canvas. And so I do encourage you to continue um, doing what you do, sharing your light. In fact, you have. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to share this video and like, comment, and subscribe. You can find us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at New You Wow. Until next time, stand tall in your power and remember, your belief in yourself is your superpower.